Eric Schiffer is a social media expert and founder of ReputationManagementConsultants.com, and he joins us tonight. Eric, thanks a lot for coming on. Absolutely. Um, Thank you. Nice to be with you. So there is mounting evidence, science has produced mounting evidence, that some of the products that Silicon Valley produces hurt people, particularly children, and that there appears to be a direct connection between the time people spend using these products and the condition of their mental health. I'm wondering what Silicon Valley is doing about that. I don't see them doing anything about it, and, and I'm confused. Well, you know, I think that uh, those are certainly valid uh, concerns that some have raised in aspects of the community. But there's a whole other side of Facebook, and I think that uh, that's just one. I mean, you can make many of these same arguments uh, with respect to television. You can make them certainly with respect to music. I mean, we've heard these arguments before in history. There's no question. And the truth is, I mean, even a show like yours that's captivating, it's interesting. I mean, it's yeah. designed to hold. It's designed to, to capture people and, and make them stick. And, and it yeah. does. And it does it well. If, if, and if, so if, I if only. I mean, my show and cable news has not totally reordered our society. And, I mean, you heard Sean Parker say it. It totally changes the way people well, deal with one another. Well, liberals would think so. Well, it's not just li it's not a liberal conservative thing. Here's the <laughs> truth. This stuff came out of nowhere, this technology, f fewer than 20 years ago, and changed the way we live completely. These are the richest people in our society. They have almost unlimited assets, and they seem to have spent almost no time figuring out what effects their products have on people. And that just seems irresponsible to me, or perhaps I'm missing something. Well, look, it's capitalism, okay? And I think that when okay. uh, the goal is in any kind of media, and this is a media uh, entity, if you will, uh, it's all about holding people. It's all about capturing people, whether it's uh, television, it's movies, it's music. And I think they have figured it out. But in the brain, well, wait, wait, hold on. it's Why the is same that different? Effects. I mean, first of all, I love how liberals are now defending unrestrained market capitalism because they're profiting from it. But how is that different from selling crack cocaine or heroin? I mean, that's just capitalism. And the whole point is to get people engaged. And so, like, why do you care what the effect is on them? And there's not really an answer, is it? Well, I think it's it's certainly an interesting debate. I mean, where do you draw the line? Because you can make the argument that almost anything then that holds people and captures people that may have any uh, effect in that way could be negative. And so, no one's advocating for drugs. There's no question about well, that. Well, wait a second. Here what I think the guy I'm trying to say the is the product saying is we knew that this was addictive. We knew it hurt people, and we did it anyway. So we've created this class of child billionaires who apparently knew they were hurting the population when they created the product. I don't understand why there isn't a congressional hearing about this. I mean, if this was a drug, there would be. Well, I, I understand. But then you, what about movies? What about violent video games? Where do you draw the line, Tucker? And so I guess my point in all of this is that when you have a platform like Facebook or television or music, et cetera, you have to also balance it against the social good. I mean, when you consider Facebook, that's allowed democracy to thrive. I mean, in the Middle East, it took down regimes okay. that were no, against I, America. I know the talking points. It, it it looks, but I'm not saying it, it has no redeeming social value. I'm not arguing that. I'm just saying that I, underneath I also, the ad copy that you're repeating and the propaganda is another side, and that it appears to have a deleterious effect on the mental health of kids. And I just don't see the people profiting from this taking that seriously at all. Look, if I own a casino, there's an upside to casinos, but I also have to put money aside to fund help for people who are hurt by my products. Same with the cigarette makers, same with the liquor distributors. Why is Silicon Valley exempt just because they give a ton of money to politicians? Well, I don't think Silicon Valley is exempt, and I don't think that anyone is suggesting that they are. Uh, there's no question that no one wants to hurt children, uh, certainly myself, anyone uh, so that how much cares are they about spending, kids how much or are they cares about this research? How much is Mark Zuckerberg, one of the richest people in human history, how much is he spending to determine the effect of his product on children and then to help the children who his product is hurting? Is he spending, how much is he spending on that, do you think? Well, oh, but the same argument is true of but the same argument is true of television and, and radio and television's and been around for seventy about years. Music. We've got a pretty good handle on what television does, and I wouldn't defend a lot of it. But the internet right. is a totally different experience, and we don't know actually what the effects are. And the point is, these guys don't care because they're greedy, actually. And you just had one of them saying, "Oh yeah, we're hurting people," but you know, I'm a billionaire. I'm gonna live to one hundred and sixty. Like what? Why is that okay? That's horrifying behavior, don't you think? I, I don't think what uh, you're referencing in terms of a general sense 
anyone would say is okay. What I think we're trying to do is balance the totality of everything. I mean, for instance, with conservatives, for instance, uh, right. you know, it's possible that without Facebook, Donald Trump wouldn't have been elected president. I mean, the digital director yeah, of maybe. Trump's campaign as much said the case. So, and conservatives also are using Facebook to well, sure. thwart but again, the it's mainstream not a media. Thing. I mean, and I, I think mean, Facebook is probably great in mm -hmm. Burma. There are lots of things about Facebook that I like. I'm not, you know, I, I think there's an upside to Facebook. I'm merely saying there appears to be a massive downside that the company itself is ignoring. There's an upside to cigarettes. They're fun to smoke. They kill you after a while. Do you know what I mean? It's not that there's nothing good about well, it. It's that I, there's clearly something really bad I don't about think it that the company is hiding. To, yeah. I don't think there's an upside to cigarettes, in my but opinion. See, but I, and I think point. that... Yeah, I do see your point, absolutely. And I think that also I would see the other side. I also see the fact that there's been so much positive and we have to balance it. That's not to say that Facebook should not be spending more uh, to protect kids, to keep bullying away. Anything? And frankly, I think they have done a nice job in no, that but regard. Bullying, I think they... bullying displaces the responsibility from themselves onto their consumers. They're saying people are misusing our product. Maybe use of the product itself hurts people. Maybe we should do some research on this. Maybe they should sit in the hot seat in Congress and ask some real questions. But whatever. Well, I think that's an interesting point. But, but <laughs> yeah. Tucker, maybe, imagine maybe without a Facebook. But yeah. imagine without a Facebook. Well, I grew up without where a Facebook. Where would conservatives be? Kind of a happy but, world. But, no, but you know where would what? They I, be? I was pretty happy before <laughs> Facebook. I gotta say, uh, I, I, as far as I remember. But you, Eric, but you, you yourself benefit from it. You yourself yeah. benefit from it. I mean, you, you use it Doesn't every mean day. There's not a downside. So let's just stop lying and get to the get to the heart of it, to the facts. Thank you, Eric. Tom Kirsting is a psychotherapist and author of Disconnected: How to Reconnect Your Digitally Distracted kids. There's a title every parent can relate to, and he joins us now. So, Tom, what do we know, and I know this is this research is in its infancy, but about the effect of social media and screen time on kids? Well, I could tell you, I have, I've, I've got a litany of um, information in my book, research-based, and anecdotally, as a therapist, this is basically all I deal with nowadays. I would say I have hmm. probably twice as many uh, middle school age kids with, with major anxiety dis disorders this year alone in the previous 17 years combined. And I could tie it to social media, electronics, and so forth to a T. Okay, so, so, you know, those, I'm 48, so not that old, but I grew up at a time when none of this existed. And it's very obvious, and I'm sure you have the same experience, yeah. to me, that a lot has changed. It is not related to our political system or our economy. Something fundamental has changed. How do you draw the connection? Why are you so certain that it's digital media that is doing it? Well, if you look at it like this, take the, the, a kid today. They have a front row ticket to every second of their peers' lives. We didn't have that. We didn't know what our yeah, friends right. were doing down the road. So you give a kid who's a, a pre-adolescent or an adolescent and by nature is trying to figure out who he or she is, what, what, where they exist in a social pecking order, and now you give them this weapon of mass destruction called a, a smartphone, and now they're getting feedback constantly fueling their self-esteem, but it's actually not helping their self-esteem. Because last time I checked, the word self-esteem starts with the word self, not others. And they're That's getting right. all of this feedback. And it's really, really destroying our kids. And they're spending nine hours a day using this stuff. And nine hours a day of anything, I don't care if it's exercise, um, even nine hours of exercise is going to be good for you. No, that's, that's a, I think, a wise and true point. So what do you think when you see one of the people who created this product, Facebook, bragging both that he knew it hurt people, he knew it was addictive, but he doesn't care because now he's a billionaire and you're not. Could the leader of any other industry get away with that? I don't think so. And it's funny because when I give these lectures, I liken this stuff to uh, the tobacco industry back in the day. Yes. And how this stuff, and I think we're going to start seeing in the next three to five years, major, major shifts going on in our society as this stuff continues to, to, to reveal itself. I give, I've been lecturing about this for, since 2009, so I'm, sometimes I feel like I'm the only person out there talking to parents and giving them the information that they need so that they could save their kids. This stuff's stripping us uh, from our relationships with our children as well because we've got our heads down, and every time we catch the moment on our phone, we're missing the moment. We're missing a milestone with our children. Let me just ask you finally a meta question. This is happening to every, every person watching right now knows exactly what you're talking about because we're all living it. Yep. How is it that 320 million people can be having the exact same experience that's clearly bad and nobody says anything about it? Why isn't this a constant topic of conversation? It's, it's, it's called social conformity. And if you know what that is, I'm sure you do. Social conformity means we, we tend to just go like the flock of the birds. If we see everybody yes. else has something, Oh, you know what? Every other fourth grader has a smartphone now, so I think I'll get one for my child. 
Yet in the back of our mind, we know that it's dangerous. So we, we need to do something. That's why I yeah. wrote this book. Amen. Groupthink is the term we use. Tom, thank you very much. Thank you, Tucker.